Secret. Welcome to another edition of Yachtline Chronicles, <laughs> where we are better together than separated. We are here at Miss Phyllis' house today. Um, Miss Phyllis is a very unique, very interesting, very inspiring um, individual. I had the opportunity to meet Miss Phyllis at my Auntie Vera's funeral um, in a graveyard, and she is the Dove Release Lady. And Miss Phyllis, um, it was interesting to know that the Doves that's being released comes it it they beat Miss Phyllis back home, you know. And I wanted to come in and talk to Miss Phyllis, you know, because I also wanted to talk to Miss Phyllis about business. You know, because us as black people, we go to the club and we throw our money up, you know, in the sky and it fall on the ground and, and it's just gone. You know, but Miss Phyllis is able to recycle her money when doves are released and they come back to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the thing about that as 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 own as 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 business owners, the thing about us as entrepreneurs, you know. We have to find ways to keep recycling our money, you know, because we want to cut down costs. We want to um, we 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 want to lower the cost of any inventory. You know, we just want to make money after the COVID and things of that nature. You know, we have then lost so much. So we just want to talk to Miss Phyllis today. You know, um, about you know, you know, how did this how did this all start? Like, when was the first time that you you had a dove in your hand. That was at uh, our uncle's, my husband's uncle's house. And uh, he's an uncle to me by marriage. And I used to sit outside with him and watch his birds. He had, mm -hmm. he had racing pigeons. And I was fascinated with the pigeons. And a lot of times it would be family get-togethers. I'm not a big drinker. Um, and my husband used to be partying, which is fine. And he and my the uncle and I would sit outside and we'd talk about the birds and I learned everything that I know today from him. Mm -hmm. And then some other things just by having the business. Well he then my aunt was gonna start the business and uh Uncle Ted come down with cancer and about six months later he was gone. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to deal with the birds. A few relatives took some birds, but I took uh I got some birds from him and then just carried on the business that he was going to create right. i created so how was that just being you know you know just nurturing the birds the cleanup process a, i mean how did you be how did you <laughs> how did you adjust to that you know right. how did you adapt to that it's you know? a lot of work because uh, and then you gotta have a certain area certain space mm -hmm. of the home particularly just for that just for the birds we had uh well, before he passed, he helped my husband get uh, build. We purchased a barn from Lowe's and and had it delivered here. One of those ones that was on display, so I got a little cheaper price. Mm -hmm. Everything and I was trying to think, how can I do it more economical when you go into a business? And I had no clue if this was going to go over or not. I mean, I I just I like the birds. I like because they're pure white. Mm -hmm. But his weren't. They were pure white, but they were bred off of colored run, uh, mm -hmm. flyers. So I knew they had the smarts to come home. Mm -hmm. A white to white pigeon, they're kind of dumb. You got to have that color somewhere in the lineage in the back line mm -hmm. and background. So we got that and started. I started here in Saginaw with a few releases and they went well and I enjoyed doing it. And then I came up with something I'll show you later is the keepsake that I make for the families. Because mm -hmm. I wanted them mm -hmm. to know that was another business move. Right. Because I was kind of reading up on things and how can I be unique? Well, to create this keepsake that a family can take with them. And the keepsake and is the, the picture, basically the bio of yeah. the deceased. Yes. It, well, no. You want to go get that keepsake off the phone? Mm -hmm. um, it's a. It has the picture of the person, the date of birth, the date of passing, and a beautiful reading, and it has a feather from the dove. So I have had Miss Maggie that calls me from Georgia every year when her son 
she he was unfortunately murdered here in Saginaw. She flew up here and I did the funeral, but every year she calls me mm -hmm. on his birth date and she says, I have my boy's picture right there. Oh, hi. There it is. Oh, and this is, and this is what we call, this is what's called keepsake. a keepsake. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys can see that. Yeah. Every funeral I do, every memorial, they always get, they always get that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is, and you take this feather out of one of the doves and, and put it in each, there. Each year the doves, um, they shed all their feathers and they grow new ones. Okay. It's like a dog sheds fur. Right. So then I gather them up, wash them all up good, and then place them when I need them. Right. Keepsakes. And people, they, they like them so well that a lot of times they'll order extra ones. So what does the what does the uh, you know because the dove is that is that the is that a white color what okay and you can it's actually a pigeon a white somewhat white pigeon crossed with a white biblical dove which are the smaller doves okay they have no homing instinct so you don't use those right but it gives them that it gives that pigeon that pretty color so it's half. The biblical dove and half the pigeon, mm. and it's got a homey instinct, so it goes home. And you let it go, but I train them from the time they're so, eight weeks old. Okay, so, so from the time, oh, so mm -hmm. you, so at eight weeks they know how to come back home. No, you start at eight weeks. You start training them at eight weeks. It takes about eight, eight weeks to train them. Okay. To go twenty-five miles. Oh. Okay, and then I push them up to about fifty miles. Once they go fifty miles. And drop them off. Say you go to Flint, I go to Flint, mm -hmm. River Rest Cemetery, Sunsets. Take them once I can get them to there and they come home, I can take them to Bonnie and have Detroit. And then find their way back home. Find their way back home. And that's so it's, interesting. And I, I tell people, you know, when Noah built his ark, it was the doves that told them there was, there was a new journey. So when I incorporate that into my, and I believe this. And I incorporate that into my prayer for my families. Let them know that God's taken their loved one on a different journey mm -hmm. of peace and tranquility. And that's what that does stands for. Mm -hmm. Love, unity, peace, tranquility. That means more to me than, mm -hmm. yes, I make money off of it, but I truly, uh, when I look at the faces and I'm talking to everyone at one of those ceremonies, I mean it when mm -hmm. I tell them, your loved one is with God. Right, and the dove represents the spirit He's, of the, the person. Dove symbolizes the spirit. Uh -huh. When God gives us to this earth, we're His child, uh -huh. and we have a spirit in us. And the white dove symbolizes that spirit. Very, the white dove is very symbolic, and it's the first thing I start out with. And I'll say it's very symbolic. Uh -huh. God has many creatures, but He used the white dove as a symbol. Uh -huh. Same as when you see on Christmas cards or. Anywhere, usually your first thought of a white dove is love, mm -hmm. love and peace. Exactly. And so harmony, you know. Right. Yeah. All those things. So, and why was it your passion to just stay in that field, that vocation of dealing with the doves? Like, you know, do you have any other hobbies, any other things? I raise you want? chickens. Huh? I raise chickens. Oh, you raise chickens too. <laughs> raise so, chickens. I have eggs. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, I just, it was, it started out with kind of a hobby. Mm -hmm. I didn't think of it like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. going to get into this big business and everything. And I thought, and I still do, it still fascinates me mm -hmm. as the owner to watch those birds take flight. They circle and they head home. It amazes me because I don't know how they do it. Nobody it's, really does. Right, it's exactly. It's instinct. And then you think, you know, because doves, head is so big, you know, the brain is so little inside a dove, mm -hmm. you know, for a dove to be able to go out 50 miles or whatever and, and you home. and be able to find their home. Mm -hmm. how, how happy, how elated do you be to just oh, see when, when see each them, one of them come home? When you see them fly in, because I'll see them fly in, they land on the barn on top of their, we call the pigeon loft. It's okay. a barn, just a fancy word for a barn. But they like you watch them fly in, and each they all have numbers on their legs, so I know which numbers I take, 
-hmm. and then I look for them in the loft to see if they put it in. But it just, it's a good feeling. Have you ever lost one? Yes. You do lose them. That's un unfortunate, but it's part of the job. Mm -hmm. But it's maybe only a year. It can be maybe only maybe 2% of them. Okay. Yeah, okay. So it's not a high, it's not a high. But you need to be careful because this time of year, I don't like a flying too right. far. Right. Because they don't, whatever it is about the snow, it throws off their navigation. Okay. So I had to learn that the hard way. Mm -hmm. I sent out some birds and mm -hmm. didn't see quite a few. Right. For a while. Right. <laughs> and I know working for Evans, I mean, uh, well, not, well, working with. Mm -hmm. Evans and Browns because you are your own business yes. entrepreneur. Mine is You're not part Dreamers White Dove release. It, it was Dreamers. Dreamers White Dove. Release. Dreamers White Dove that's, release. That's the name of my business. You know, yeah. and I work you, closely with Evans Brown and Paradise. And you know, being in this era, you know, it just seemed like we have so many people that's checking out on us lately. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people been checking sad. out and, it, and it's really people. been sad, Young you people. know. And did you ever think that your business was going to be in high demand the way that it is now? No, never dreamed. There's other people out there and my husband always tells me it's the way I do it because I have people that request just me. Mm -hmm. I have families in Saginaw. They'll call me. They can call someone else in Flint. Mm -hmm. He'll come up here and do it. And, uh, but when a family calls me, I recognize the fact, and I don't care what color you are, you've lost someone. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a hurt that none of us can, we right. all hurt differently. And so from the time that phone call comes in, I make sure that I help them all the way through until mm -hmm. those birds are released. Right. And so is it a business? It's a business, but mm -hmm. it's, I feel like it's a, it's a, I don't know if I want to call it spiritual or something I'm giving also right. to that family. Right, because it's, it's a lot of healing that come with it. Mm -hmm. Closure. A lot of healing, a lot of you'll closure. See, you see the tears, and then they watch those birds go up. It's like, wow. You know? And so that feeling, because everything's sad, it's just, you know, and then right. you know, that one thing where they watch the right. birds. Or maybe the, the, the last one last thing, thing right? right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, and I want to ask you, how hard is it sometimes to, you know, to just take those families' hands and be able to grip it around the doves, you know? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of, a lot of, well, probably nine times out of ten, you know, a lot of, a lot of people never really held well, the dove and released dove. it. That's why I try to cup my hand around theirs. Okay. Okay. First of all, we're strangers. Okay. You know, we are, and and I don't know if you want to add. This. But a lot of times it's a different race than I am. Okay? Mm -hmm. Never had a problem. I don't even feel uncomfortable. Right. And I just don't know some other And the person that never felt uncomfortable. I don't think either. they do either. Right. I've never had it's anybody. It's the spirit of the dove. You know, yeah. And they just, I'll say, here, let me help you hold it. And I show them how to hold it. And they're like, you know, because if you've never held one, you feel a little Kind of feel a little strange. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you feel strange. And then I'll tell them how to, especially the kids, I'll say, have you ever thrown a underhand the basketball and the hoop, well that's why I want you to throw these birds. Mm -hmm. All right, you know. And uh, I met so many beautiful people. Mm -hmm. You can just, they're just kind, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't look at, you can ask anybody that knows me, I don't, I don't care what walk of life you've mm -hmm. You know, at this time, at this moment, whether it be a funeral, actual funeral, a memorial, where they had to cremate, mm -hmm. if it's a memorial at home, sometimes. And I we want to also, mm -hmm. we also want to uh, let you guys know out there that she doesn't also do dove releases for funerals. Name some of the other things that for you do weekend. dove releases for. For weddings, anniversaries, um, birthday memorials mm -hmm. where a person's passed in the year. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just all meet at the cemetery on the date the person had passed, mm -hmm. you know. And we do those type of celebrations. I call them mm -hmm. celebrations. And then baby gender, mm -hmm. the new one, where I'll have the bird in the cage and then it has a little ribbon, pink ribbon around the okay. new one. And I take off the, uh, the silk cloth and there's the bird that has one or the other color. Right. And that's exciting. You can do that right in the house. Right. Yeah. 
you know, you got a you got a real interesting, real, real amusing mm -hmm. job. You know what I'm saying? And and those dubs amuse a lot of people. You know, and us at Saga Noise, we want to thank you. You know, for the closure and for the just the just the closure that you give us. You know, and our families around here. You know, bringing the doves in and. And, and, and being able to see our family spirit being raised in the air and just fly away one last time, mm -hmm. you know. And without you, you know, we wouldn't have that closure, you know. Yeah. So I want to yeah. tell Miss yeah. Phyllis, yeah. you know, from, from us in Saginaw, you know what I'm saying, we thank you for what you are doing, you know. We thank you for, you know, bringing your doves and bringing your business to the city. And, um, just being a part of the community and just helping it to grow, helping it to be able to improve, and most of all, giving it some healing. Yeah. You know, so. I think it's Yeah. That's, where I, go. That's yeah. where I go. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is, is anytime, sometimes I have families that will call me and say, I have a sick family, I'm just having a very difficult time. They've lost a baby, which is one of the, you know, a very, Mm. And I will go and we'll release the dove together. And I talk about the little one and how mm. they lifted on the wings of a dove. And many times I've seen the mother give me a big hug and, and she'll say, hey, you know, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Hospice yep. people have done it for people that lose. In fact, one of my goals this coming year is to have a, a huge release, gather people in the baby area at Forest Lawn. Many people, babies I've done releases for, mm. and this would be something we just do for them, right? And then have families release a dove in the name of the child. Wow, uh, I think that'd be beautiful. Yep, so <laughs> you know, like I say, you know, we, we have to support each other's business, you yes. know, and because if we don't support each other's business, we put each other out of business from mm -hmm. lack of support. You know, it takes finances to keep these machines, these small businesses to to keep running you know it take finances it it take funding you know um so we just i ask that you support you know miss phyllis business you know you. with the dove releases um is there any do you what is, do you have any social media any um contact information have, where people uh, can get in contact with you on facebook okay, okay. it's uh uh, DreamersWhiteDoveRelease.com and it'll take you right to my website yeah. and you can look me up on Facebook that way too Dreamers White Dove Release Dreamers White Dove Release mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we finna go out here and we finna go look at the birds and Miss Phyllis finna, you know, just take us on the journey, man, since she was you know, took over for somebody else and, mm -hmm. you know, you know, just sometimes things just land in your life you know, mm -hmm. and you know, we never knew that we'll be doing certain things that we're doing today, but based on what other people have initiated in life and you know, and and, 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 and we take it and sometimes enhance it. You know, so I would like for you guys to support Miss Phyllis business. I would like for you to tap in with her at, at Dreamers White Dove Release dot com. Mm -hmm. dot com. And we're gonna go out here in the cage and see some doves. Can't have you in here because it scares me. Alright, let's go. Let's go outside. Let's go outside. Here's one of my original birds. 
And this guy is about seven years old. Mm -hmm. And how I know him is there's the band I was talking about. He's number blue 47. Oh, okay. And, yeah, I see the band. And he is a 100 mile bird. He will fly 100 miles for you. And, so, and how old are, is he? He's five years old. Wow. So how many of these pigeons have you raised in your lifetime? Oh, I bet you I've raised over 500. Over 500? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, I've, I've helped two other businesses get started. So I've given them birds. I've sold birds to people because they want, they like my, my bloodline because they're good flyers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they come home. Yeah. Is there a difference in the pigeons? You know how there is, you know, pit bulls. You got this line of pit bulls, this line. Is, what, what, so what, what line of pigeons are these? These are actually, uh, TNT was the line that they come out of. And I've crossbred them. You see the, the blue and white bird? He's crossbred with some of these white ones. Because he's an excellent homer. This bird right here, that's fine. Yep. And he's crossbred. I crossbred about three generations, and then I'll get a nice white flyer, and they are smart. He's pretty, too. Yeah, those are a blue bar. That's, he's a true racer. He's a 500-mile bird. Oh, so that bird there can fly 500 miles? He'll come home from Bowling Green, Kentucky. He'll come home from where? Bowling Green, Kentucky. Wow, that's unique. Yeah. The bird can fly 500. One of his babies has got a blue... Oh, I, we see that. Blue mark on his neck. Yeah. Oh, guys, y'all see that? With the blue mark? Yep, yeah, he come out of him. That's one of his babies. So, so take us through that process of when you, when the, when the birds are pregnant and, and the eggs hatch. Well, you know, what part do you play in that? Nothing. Just, mm, just wait, huh? She lays an egg one day and then she'll... The next day she'll lay the second egg. Mm. She'll sit on her eggs um, for 21 days or 14 days. And then uh, they hatch, they take care of them, they feed them, and they do everything with them mm -hmm. until they come out of the nest. And that's where I come into play. Well, I usually separate them when they eat on their own, they drink on their own. And then they go into a different part of the loft, which the sloths are separated. So what you usually feed them? Uh, I have a special mix of pigeon feed that I have made at the uh, Freeland Granary. And uh, I put so much percent protein and things that I feel that are good for racers. And you, so you can see they're not real big. Now this is a this is a male bird. He's a big, big guy. But you see the other ones are hens. They're a little bit smaller. Uh -huh. And they're fast. So that's how you could tell the difference between a male and a female is the hens. Mm -hmm. It's hard with a white bird. But I do happen to know because of the small Because okay. the biggest enemy is a hawk. Now, this morning, there was a Cooper hawk sitting right on the edge of this corner and looking down at these birds. Right. And they all run in because they're afraid. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want to attack, you know, because, that's you know, and that and that's a part of the thing about your business is keeping your business safe, keeping your business protected from the hawks, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, you know, because, you know, <laughs> you don't want the hawks decimating your business. So my day starts out with feeding mm -hmm. water every day. Mm -hmm. Once a week, I scrape the floors mm -hmm. and clean them, put a disinfectant powder down, mm -hmm. put wood chips down to keep nice and clean because you mm -hmm. want, we don't want to see a white bird that's got stuff on them. Right. Because they're, you know. Right. So, Miss Phyllis, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, tell us what's your purpose with you and the birds? What is my purpose? Mm-hmm. Well, it's twofold. The birds give me peace. When I'm out here, I'm in my happy place. And then secondly, I use that to do some, something I truly love with the birds. I use that to help other people. And give closure, give peace, solitude to many, many people. And it gives me a beautiful feeling. I come back from a release and I feel good. Mm. It's like a part of you been released as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, you I'm know. Proud. I'm proud of people say, 
there's Miss Phyllis, the bird lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and nine times out of ten, you can catch Miss Phyllis out there at uh, Forest Line, you know, call her for your weddings, call her for your latest events, you know, gatherings, and, you know, she going to bring her doves and make it a special occasion. Mm -hmm. We'd like to thank you, Ms. Phyllis, Ms. Phyllis, today for letting me come out to your home and being able to do an interview with you and being able to show people it's not about color. You know, it's not about black or white. It's just about humanity altogether. You know, we don't see color. All we see is people, personality, and the person that that person is. You know, we all out here, we are good people. You know, we're trying to survive out here as entrepreneurs, and I ask that you support Miss Phyllis' business and also support Yacht Life Chronicles. You know, this is another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles where we are better together than separated.